Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. And it is Thursday here on this program, and we got a lot of news to get into here today. Because Wednesday, of course, is AW Dynamite. We've got the Dynamite recap for you here today. Of course, it was the follow-up show to the pay-per-view, and so much of the show was about building up what's coming next. And they shot a whole bunch of angles, and there were a whole bunch of talking segments. And incredibly, we had a World and Tag Team Championship match on the show. The world title match announced very late. I don't even know if they announced the tag team title match. I was just watching the show, and all of a sudden there's a tag team title match. So we'll talk about all of that here today on the program, as well as the news. What is going on with Cody Rhodes? Well, it is to be determined. But I'll tell you what the latest is on Cody Rhodes. We have also got William Regal's return to wrestling promo on AEW that went long. He has apologized publicly for going so long. A lot of stuff had to be cut later on in the show because he just kept talking. So we'll tell you about that as well as Sting talking about his struggles with opioids and alcohol. The NXT 2.0 ratings from Tuesday night. I've now seen all of NXT 2.0. I saw everything except the tag team title match and the world title match, the NXT title match. I've now seen everything, so if you want to talk about that. And your new NXT champion, Dolph Ziggler. He's the champion of NXT 2.0 now. Dolph Ziggler. We can talk about that. Braun Strowman being told to smile more on Raw. You're a baby face, you got to smile. Did you know that? And if you're a heel, you can be angry. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. I met I LOL'd when uh, on, what is today, Thursday? Thursday mm-hmm. here? Yeah. I talked in the opening segment about uh, Dolph Ziggler being the NXT 2.0 champion, which happened two days ago. Some bloke goes, what? Ziggler? <laughs> yeah. Bro, I thought I was like out to lunch not knowing there was a world title match on the Dynamite show last night. This guy didn't well, even know that Ziggler won the world title 48 hours ago. Yeah, but let's be fair here. I mean, yes, I guess NXT got, what, about 650,000 people this week that watch, but it's not like everybody in the world is paying attention to the happenings of NXT week in and week out here. Even the, the hardest of hardcores may have some other things to watch besides NXT. 613,000 viewers for that there NXT show with the title change. 0.13, exactly the same as last week. So uh, it did what it does. That's it. That's all it's going to do. This was Roadblock, brother. There's a yeah. three-way match for the for the championship. They beat Dolph Ziggler on Monday night, brother. Why is it only doing a point one three? Because they didn't announce it uh, close enough to the ah, show. I don't get into this. <laughs> You're right, by the way. I don't even want it's to a talk theory. about it. It's a theory. Look, and here's the thing it about that. It's the only thing I'm going to throw in on this. You can say something's giving you a return on your investment because you got, you know, 10 cents. But if there are other tried and true methods that may very well, maybe it's not even tried and true. Let's just say there's maybe another method that could get you 75 cents to a dollar back. Wouldn't you do that? I, I don't know. There's just, again, it was a chicken egg argument, but I tend to fall on your end of the line there. And saying something that WWE is doing uh, that has proven not to be effective for them as an excuse for why something else is okay, I don't know. But you know what? Maybe we can take that up with him tomorrow again. I'm going to move on to Cody Rhodes, everybody. Oh, Time no. is running out for a deal to be made between WWE and free agent Cody Rhodes. Mm. He's to appear at WrestleMania 38 in Dallas. Dave Meltzer briefly, briefly discussed the current situation on Observer Radio, saying Rhodes and WWE have yet to come to terms on a return to the company. They are still negotiating. Could have had plans for Rhodes. Time is running out in order to get things in motion for that. Elser speculated it would make sense for Rhodes to make his return at this Monday's Raw in Jacksonville. But if that or if, uh, Rhodes is not there, a deal still likely will not have been reached. Can you read between the lines there? Dude, look. I'll tell you. If they sign this deal, he's debuting Monday. Damn right. If not, he's not. So there's you your know answer. What? If they do make something happen, at this point, if it's not Jacksonville where you make that, you know aesthetic impact if nothing else you know that that extra twist with the knife i guess if you're on wwe side of this equation to me wait until after wrestlemania 
Cody Rhodes then being thrown onto WrestleMania last minute or being a surprise or something like that on one of the last two nights, not going to drive any buys at that point. You know, it's just not. With all the other names that they have, Steve Austin, you, you choose, it's not going to matter. So to me, build it then for Raw and SmackDown afterwards. I mean, obviously you have backlash as well, too, so maybe you could even wait until after that. But I wouldn't even bother at this point. If it's not Monday, then if they do reach an agreement, which I guess is up in the air, <laughs> you know, who knows what the hell is going to happen with Cody now. Just to me, don't do it. Maximize your TV afterward, the fact. Here's the thing, everybody. There is a plan for Cody to be at WrestleMania. But until the deal is done, it's only a plan. This is exactly what I talked about a couple of days ago with Steve Austin. I don't think that Steve Austin actually fully agreed and signed to do this thing until, like, very recently. And uh, I I was given that impression by somebody. And if you watch the television, I mean, I'm pretty sure that, that that's the case. Because, as I noted, they never... They only built up that Kevin Owens was going to feud with somebody from Texas. Luckily, they got a lot of big stars from Texas. And so they left it open-ended. They made it very easy. Like, this is one of those things where, remember that poll they did, who tells better stories, you know, WWE or, or AEW? And, like, m people voted for WWE. And it's like, what? Well, this is one of those reasons. They, they left it open-ended, and then they created their story after he had finally agreed to do it, and they announced it on, on Monday. So it's the exact same thing with Cody. Like, they have a plan, and, you know, that's what the plan is. But will it get done? I don't know. And, and, just want to yes. throw in the fact that it's a, uh, it's a two-day WrestleMania. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you yeah know? it's true. Yeah. Hey, I, I wonder when ideas are being bandied about, you know, for certain things. It seems like Cody could have easily walked in with the Edge deal. And Edge could have still been a babyface in that. Obviously, AJ Styles is that person there. Do you think that it was actually set up for AJ Styles? Or do you think they just had an idea, applied it to Edge? Maybe Because, again, this seems like something where Cody would have been perfect for it. Do you think... Do you think that was ever, you know, AJ Styles, do you think his insertion here was, you know, later in the game, or do you think it was planned the whole time? I don't know if it's planned the whole time, but I'm, I, I, I would presume, I would presume that uh, AJ versus Edge was the plan. Because okay. if not, like, okay, who do I think is going to face Cody at WrestleMania? Seth. Okay? Seth has no clear path to WrestleMania. Seth Whoa. Rollins. You know, we got a two-night WrestleMania, but, bro, we can't find anything for Seth Rollins to do. So I believe that at this moment, like, that's the plan. But let's say that Cody doesn't come to an agreement. They got to do something with, with Seth Rollins. So it would have been the exact same thing with Edge. If Cody versus Edge was the plan, they would have been waiting the same way they're waiting for whatever they're doing with Seth Rollins. So I think that the idea was to do Edge versus AJ Styles. And they can... I'm pretty sure they can find a place for Seth Rollins on WrestleMania, unless I'm more competent than they are. Well, which I would argue after watching Raw every week. Anyway, I shouldn't say they. That's not very nice. There are a lot of very smart people. I never have anything bad to say about any of the wrestlers, except The Miz. And that's not personal. <laughs> it's just his matches are crappy. But, you know, I... I uh, I have nothing bad to say about the wrestlers. They're probably, of the 500 employees, I'd say probably about 497 of them I got no problem with. But there's a couple that, you know. That's the problem when you work for WWE. That's the problem when we talked about this before. When you work for WWE, like, whoever you are, you end up taking the heat for Vince. You know, the writers, the writing team. It ain't these poor blokes' fault. When you think about it, imagine, think about when I watch Raw every week and I'm all frustrated and I'm all angry about it. I'm just reviewing it. Imagine if it was your job and like you had all these ideas and you wrote this script and you spent, you know, three days on it. And then this crazy bloke comes in and just rips it up and you got to start all over again. And by the time it's done, it's like, what am I even doing this for? Oh, the money. Like, that's the only reason you're doing it. And you'd probably be more frustrated than your average fan because it's your job. Well, I think we've heard those stories time after time after time after time from people on talk shows and podcasts and such so we've seen and read these stories for a long long time so yes those folks get very very upset sometimes too i mean look look at what happened with nxt and and you know scotty too asking out and you know some of the stories we've gotten it, it just 
<laughs> it's it's a meat grinder. Boy, there. have you I heard some, some things about uh, Regal of late. Well, you know it's funny hey. when uh, when when Regal left. Uh, I I did that tweet like imagine firing William Regal, and uh, and I guess I can talk about it now. I yeah. heard from, I heard from somebody that was in in NXT, and uh, you know they weren't all that concerned about it because uh, you know Regal was not lighting the world on fire. Let's just put it this way: he wasn't lighting the world on fire in NXT there at the end, and. Uh, Anyway, now he's in AEW, and Maybe bro, a salty. dude, I have heard this guy is, like, over the moon. Like, you never saw a guy so out of his mind with happiness being in AEW. Why would he not be? Well, Why would he know, not be? He's a wrestler that went from a sports entertainment company to a wrestling company. Imagine. He's happy about it. Pro wrestling's his life. I'm not saying it saved his life, but look, it's been that constant in his life that... It, it, you saw it last night. You saw the emotion that he had talking about Tony Schiavone and Brian Danielson. I mean, this is everything to him. And I'm sure he loved his job. I'm sure he loved what he helped create with Triple H. I'm sure he loved going around and being that liaison and doing those things for WWE, going to Japan, talking to Mako Satamore, all these things that he was doing. I'm sure he loved it. And I'm sure he did get a little salty there. Everybody seemed to. Look at the upheaval. Look at the changes. These things happen. But then you get a fresh start somewhere else. You got your friends around you. You got people that love you, want you to be there. It would be great for William Regal, for sure. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Steve, that that segment during the commercial break on mm -hmm. Twitch and YouTube yes. is Denise interviewing Hammerstone. Yes. Oh, my God. I hear the sports byline commercials and everything, and you and Dom talk about baseball or some stupid crap, and I never can actually hear the interviews. I have thought for two straight months now that she was interviewing Shane Douglas. What? Bro. Shane Douglas? Once dude, you see it, you'll never unsee it. But the thing is, Looks you exactly said that. Looks exactly like Shane Douglas. But that was the thing. Like, to me, he looked like... He could have been kin to Brock Lesnar. Now that I see him, you know how Denise does that wacky face swap thing? Now all I can think of is Shane Douglas and Brock Lesnar together making video Hammerstone, who's going to want to throw us around after this. But, Golly. yeah, I know. I know. I've I met Hammerstone. Shane but Shane Douglas? But in that video right there, like, all this time I've thought she's talking to Shane Douglas. Because I, I can't hear the questions or answers. I just see the guy's face. Gah! No, he looks more like Shane Douglas and Brock on that video. No, more like yes, Brock. Yes, he does. Uh, Dude, Denise needs to do the Shane Douglas Hammerstone side by side Brian, with that. And you'd all go, oh, he's right. Brian, as I usual. I study this stuff. You have to educate yourself to this, okay? Get out of here, Mike, you idiot. Hey, listen, cameos today. Where's your cameo, everybody? How come no one's paying me to do cameos for Mike? I feel like I could make a lot of See, money you, doing that. You keep lobbying for this. Unless I'm getting paid off of some of this, don't use me. I'm not opening this stuff no, up. No, you're not being used. They're paying me to, like, you know, give you a pep talk or something like that. If you pay for this, anybody, I'm telling you right now, I'm not opening it up. I'm throwing it in the bin. Wow. And I'll, I'll just pull the headphones. I don't have to listen to it on this show. Well, that's fine. I'll still take the to. money and I'll have fun doing it. That's all that yeah, matters. I, I, exactly. You'll take the money. That's what this is really all about. Your joy is secondary to your greed well, and your I mean, desire no. to buy stuff. Hold on a second. This is not semantics. I literally take the money, but that is not used. <laughs> that is not used in the way that people often hear it used. I will. If you pay me thirty-five dollars for this cameo, you will get, uh, by cameo standards, like a thousand dollars worth. Because I don't do these lame fifteen to thirty-second BS generic cameos. You're getting your thirty-five dollars worth, brother. Trust me. Trust me. Have you got any rambling stories? I always like those, you know, to wrestle or something like that. They'll just start going off, and it's like, are you getting your money's worth because of the time? Or, you know, are you not getting your money's worth because you have no idea where this person just kind of trailed off to? Well, here's, here's, the, uh, here's the thing, everybody. Let me tell you about myself, okay? Let me tell you why I'm special. So, you know, <laughs> I do this reasons. radio show here, okay? I do this radio show, and uh, mm -hmm. every now and then I get a compliment that I do a good job on the radio. And uh, the funny <laughs> thing like is, the funny thing is... I also get comments I do a horrible job, but that's beside the well. point. The thing is, I grew up listening to Art Bell, okay? And uh, that's literally the only talk radio I ever listened to in my lifetime. Like, there, there was a time back in the day, hold on, where you would go, Oh, Brian's going all sports radio. 
Bro, I swear on my mother's, and she's not dead, but on her grave, I have never listened to a sport. Why would I listen to a sports radio show? I don't even watch sports. So I listen to Art Bell, and then uh, and then he quit. And I listened to no radio. What I did was I went and tune in radio, and I listened to the old pirate Art Bell feeds, even when he was gone. <laughs> so I kept listening to Art Bell. And then uh, one day, uh, Sirius Satellite Radio, uh, he came back. And, bro, I was over the moon. And I, guys, I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but um, he quit. And I was, I had gotten so excited and I was so mad. And I'd subscribed to Sirius a whole nine yards. And I was like, uh, I, I got to find something else. And so I found Howard Stern. Now, this was not the 80s Howard Stern. This was Howard Stern in like 2015 or whatever after uh, Art quit. And I listened to that for about three months and then I, I just couldn't do it anymore. It wasn't it was bad. It was just like, I, I just don't have time to listen to other shows. And so, uh, literally, that's the only radio I've ever listened to in my whole entire life. So, this show is just, it's just whatever I made it. So, the point is, the point is, before I did this cameo thing, okay, I had literally heard two cameos in my whole entire life. I heard the one that Undertaker did for Granny, and then um, I got the, uh, someone did the cameo for me from, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, you know the guy that tried to kill me in my final match? Nick Gage. Um, oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Those are the only two cameos you, I ever heard. Yeah, Tara. So I never, those are the only two cameos I ever heard in my life. So I didn't go into this like, oh, well, this is how you do a cameo. Oh, it's supposed to be, you know, this or that. I never even saw any. So I hit the record button and I go. I go as long, it's like a wrestling match, um, you know, on a house show or whatever. I just go as long as I need. So I don't go exactly. short. I don't go long. I go exactly as long as it takes. They never take 15 seconds. But, you know, I'd, I'd say the average is about five minutes. But I've done a few that have gotten a lot longer because, like, I got a list of things to talk about. You know, this, this bloke who watches this or whatever, I can go for a long time. But whatever you're expecting from a cameo, like, you're not going to get it from my cameo. So I don't even know what a real cameo is supposed to be like. I just, I've made it my own. That's the point. Look, we got a whole 14 minutes to talk about AEW, so if this goes the entire rest of this segment, everybody's just going to have to suck it up because, you know, it's radio and it's two people on the radio talking about radio, so here's how this is going to go. What you're saying, number one, is be yourself. That's the best thing you can actually be because the more comfortable you are with yourself in anything, the better off you are. The more confidence you're going to have if you are actually more relaxed you're going to be. It's the best thing you can be. Obviously, you want to take tips from people. Howard Stern, the new version of Howard Stern, and he was always a good interviewer. He was just he was a unique interviewer. But you see where his interview skills have actually gotten to, and people can play out how he's an Stern excellent as, interviewer as being yeah the the guy that he always hated. But obviously, it shows a big maturity professionally as far as whatever you want to say about him or his show right now. How good he is as an interviewer. You see, Rue Jude on Sirius XM, another example of somebody just being themselves, carving a niche, and just doing them and being the best that they can because. That's all at the end of the day. You got to look at yourself in the mirror and go, am I happy with who I am? What am I doing? Am I being true to myself? That's the bottom line of everything. And all the these people trying to cut their paths as podcasters, get in the positions that we're in. You know, this didn't happen overnight. It took a lot of time. You know, Brian's talking about, you know, the deal with Art Bell. God, that was around the time, if I'm not mistaken, and maybe my timeline's messed up, like we were going daily at that point. That's how long ago that was, that that was going on. And you obviously took the tradition on. It amazes me that you never heard anything. It's hard for me to believe I didn't. that at any point at your life, in the car, anywhere. No, I listen to music. See, and I was so influenced because... I, I was just heavily influenced by talk radio where I was at where – and we had – it was D.C. in the Baltimore area. So we got both sets of stations, plus I was obsessed with New York because I had family there. So I was media conscious, especially radio. I love radio. And it kills me because – it just amazes me. I shouldn't say it kills me. It amazes me because Howard Stern – because people talk about sports radio with you. I've made that comparison with you. You have Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith tendencies, and you don't even know what that means. But you're, the, the fact that the, the Brian and Vinny show, I'm not saying that it was the closest thing to a wrestling Howard Stern or that sort of thing. Some people would, you know, 
make fun of you and call it a wacky morning zoo or whatever it is. But regardless, it actually had such great radio, traditional radio qualities. It does actually I amaze me if that's the case. I it literally had never heard of the Whack Pack when Brent was regular on the show. I didn't even know what it was. Zero clue. I had Brent, dude. That's the thing. You had your Beetlejuice. <laughs> you had your, oh, you know, King of All Blacks or Underdog or, you know, all of these people, that these characters that Stern has had over the years. It's just, it's amazing. Now, listen, I mean, now, you, now you're uh, doing yeah, your so show I'll, with Artie Lang. I'll That's get to AW, amazing. everybody. If you don't like it, do your own show. Exactly. Well, let me get some news in. Carve your own niche. Sting opened up in the Players' Tribune about going through both alcohol and opioid addiction early in his career. The 62-year-old, by the way, we'll get to this, but, man, William Regal's 53, and uh, half of his promo was about how he expects to die soon. Well. That's what he said. He goes, I'm not long. I don't have much time left. He literally said those words. It was weird. Because I still have flashbacks to, like, remember when the the, uh, Ultimate Warrior Warrior got inducted into the Hall of Fame and he comes on Raw, and he gave this speech in, like, it was like a goodbye speech. And then, like, the next day he had a heart attack and died. So that's going to—I'll be remembering that for the rest of my life. I, I, I just—I watched it because I actually had to watch the show today. So on the way home, I was actually listening to the, the, the Observer show you did with Dave. And I thought the same thing. I Like, that's what I took from you saying it. But then I watched it, and I don't know maybe in real time if it hit harder— but I didn't get that impression. What I got was, you know, hey, I'm on the back side. I mean, look, I'm 46 years old. I don't think I'll make it to 92. So if I say, look, man, I got a lot less years in this game than everybody else does. You know, I can see the end. You know, this is like Crawl, the dude with the one eye. I see the end. You know what I'm saying? I think that was Crawl. Was it Dune? I don't know. One of those movies. That, regardless, bottom line is... I think maybe you took it a little more than Regal because he was smiling a little bit after that, too. I just, I don't know. I I think you took it a lot harder than I did. Jingu, you need to listen to the promo again. He was not just talking about being in a wheelchair. Anyway, Sting says in 1996, a struggle of balancing his career and his family life began to take its toll. The pills were everywhere back then, he said. Somas, Vicodin, Lortab, muscle relaxers, whatever. They were floating around like can't. I can confirm this, by the way. You could take them for pain or to pass out on planes or just have a good time. For some reason, they were never my thing, but I just couldn't sleep. Had a million things going on, so I thought, what's the big deal? And so he used pills to help him sleep, took a painkiller, drank two beers, slept better than he had in a long time, and it became a nightly routine. By 98, the thought of not taking painkillers inconceivable to him. Said it was a never-ending cycle, only a matter of time before I was dead. Summer of uh, 98, he confronted his wife. It led to what he referred to as the moment of truth, and he found the Lord. And he said he, uh, and this is dangerous, by the way, stopped cold turkey. And that was the end. So, uh, great for Sting. Been sober for decades. Back in a moment with the Dynamite Report Observer Live. Dynamite Report. Might as well. So I don't Chris Jericho coming out to address Eddie Kingston. And Jericho comes out total babyface. He's uh, talking about how, man, you know, you brought something out of me I didn't know was still there. And yes, I didn't live up to my word on Sunday. You beat me, but I refuse to shake your hand. I want you to come out. I want you to apologize for you right now. And Kingston comes out and holy smokes this guy. Man, oh man, he should be doing a cameo. This guy cut the most amazing promo about how Jericho got in his head and he was right and you know, he couldn't win the big one, and he lists all the people that he lost to. And Friday, he was thinking about not even going to do the match. And then he was at a fan fest, and four people came up to him and said, his article in the Players' Tribune, the story of his life, convinced them not to off themselves. And he's in tears, and he said he was in tears after the match in the hotel room. And he said, at the end of the day, I don't need to shake your hand. This shaking hands thing ain't about me, it's about you. And I want to know what the problem is where you can't shake my hand. And so Jericho says, you're right. I have undying respect for you. One of the best matches of my career, shake my hand. So they shake hands, and Jericho doesn't turn on him yet. Instead, 2.0 and Daniel Garcia hit the ring, and they go after the alleged baby faces. And uh, Jericho immediately goes down holding his neck. No one even hits him because, as you'll find out later, they wanted to make this seem like it was legit. 
or at least, you know, make sense of the fact that Jericho actually is with 2.0. So he goes down holding his neck, and then uh, Santana and Ortiz come down with the bat. Jericho gets hold of the bat, and he turns on Santana and Ortiz. And then out comes uh, Jake Hager, and he's acting all shocked. But then he turns on the baby faces, and they destroy them. They damn near kill Eddie Kingston with a powerbomb through a table <laughs> off the apron. It took it literally, I swear to God, it took every single one of the heels to make sure that Kingston didn't die. In real life, the heels made sure that Eddie Kingston didn't die. And then uh, Jericho announced this is the Jericho Appreciation Society. That's entertainment. And yes, his uh, heel character is a sports entertainer in the middle of AEW. This is oh a great, great opening segment. God, Matt Lee and Chris Jericho are going to be so would incorrigible be the right word to use. They are going to be so obnoxious during their promos. It is going to be it's going to be epic, probably is what it's going to be. Uh, just who can get more red and have their eyes bug out more as they yell back and forth. It's yeah, it's gonna be something. Hangman Page beat Dante Martin for the World Heavyweight Championship here on this show because uh, Dante was number one ranked, and I guess I had to get him out of the way. So uh, he beat him. Match was fun. And then uh, Hangman's putting him over afterwards when Adam Cole comes out, and Adam Cole announces he wants a six-man next week, and Hangman can choose two partners, and he has two young partners that are better friends with him than with Hangman. And he's strongly teasing it'll be the Bucks, as we'll get to. They announced that because the World Championship match did not go the allotted 60 minutes, that a standby match had been booked. I... <laughs> Pac and Wheeler Yuta. This was... That was a clash. Look, they sometimes they harken back to the past and do it well. There are other times that I don't think they, I don't think they did, and I don't like the fact that they just threw this on us last minute. Um, you know, it was fun. You know, fun glimpse into the future because those two guys are going to be there for a long period of time, and obviously Martin is probably going to be you know, whatever happens with his brother. I mean, him as a singles guy, he's like Jeff Hardy. He's our people are already. He's just you know somebody that people have really latched onto, but. Uh, I just, if you're going to do that, announce it ahead of time. And again, th that well, there's a bigger making issue. a big deal over the fact that you sh it should be a big damn deal that you're having a world title match. And the only thing I'm going to say to too, because of the, how Dave started the show yesterday with people think that Adam Page is a lackluster champion. If there's people that believe that, I can't say anything that's their opinion or whatever, but he's a softer champion in the realm of you have such big stars there you have omega and jericho and moxley and danielson and you go on and on and on and you have a young guy young champion who you're trying to build up really trying to get credibility to not saying that he doesn't have any but you're trying to get him over the top to really be at that next upper echelon level doing something like this i mean it makes for a nice match makes for people to be happy oh man him and martin together that was cool Damn it, is that really what you needed? I want every appearance by Hangman Page, the world champion, to be a big damn deal. And I think, again, they missed that last night. Is it the end of the world? Of course it's not. But I, I think that was a mistake. All right, well, let's talk about something completely different. So they announced that because this match didn't go an hour, they had a standby match, okay? The irony of this is they used to do standby matches all the time. At the end of the show, because you would do the main event, and let's say that the main event went, you know, 12 minutes, and you had nine minutes of TV time left. You can't just sit there for nine minutes, so they would have a standby match booked for the end of the show, okay? The standby match went in the middle of the show, and ironically, if they had not done the standby match in the middle of the show, they would have had to cut time at the end of the show when Regal went long. Yeah. That's why the standby match goes at the end, not in the middle. I know. It also depends on what territory you were in and how those rules worked and when you put what title match on. Usually they would put title matches on the end, but there would be some times where, again, for angle reasons and different purposes, they would be on. And again, every promotion did it a little bit differently. All right. So we had Brian Daniels and John Moxley versus J.D. Drake and Anthony Henry. What a what a beauty of a match. They brutalized these men. They killed them dead. And then uh, Regal was out at ringside. They interviewed Regal afterwards. He did the promo. 
And uh, and as noted, he went a long time, and he talked about how you know people knew the name Regal because of Brian Danielson, because Danielson had mentioned him year after year after year. And he saw he left WWE and he didn't watch any wrestling, but then he heard that Danielson was still talking about him. So he watched the show. He saw that it was going to be Danielson versus Moxley, the paper, and he thought I got to be there, like all of us. And then he showed up, and the rest is history. So they're going to smash everybody, according to William Regal. It was a it was an up and down promo. I mean, it did go too long. It was um, an emotional promo, and also a good promo, and also a too long promo, it, all look, at the it, same time. It was a promo for the people, but you know what? For it was more of a promo for them. You know what I mean? And I know you got to hit your cues and your times and all that sort of thing. But hey, I'm good with it. We had a Dark Order segment, which was poor Adam Page shows up, and they, they all think they're going to be his partner, and he has to tell them, I actually asked Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. And they all go, ah, ah. but you can see that there, there's a rift here. And then in our standby match in the middle of the show, Pac beat Wheeler Yuta. It was fun, but um, it was honestly unneeded. And uh, they didn't know that, obviously. But actually, you know what's funny? I guess they'd already but, announced it. But yeah, this did come after the Regal segment, so they could have just pulled it. But once they announced it, I mean, they pretty much had to do it. I don't know. I See, I was surprised by that, too, because I didn't remember in the update yesterday if they had announced it before we started doing the show. But that was a match to me. It's like, okay, then put it on Rampage with Swerve. You make it a big Rampage. I, and you wouldn't have missed a beat, I don't think. We had Adam Cole and the Young Bucks and Red Dragon have a meeting. And long story short, Cole was going to announce that the Bucks were his partners. But when the Bucks heard that he was going to do it, they were like, we ain't doing this match. We're not doing anything involving Hangman. And so he goes, uh, I was going to ask them. And he storms off because he's all upset. Because the key is, he told Hangman, these guys are better friends with me than with you. And so when they said, we're not going to do a match with you if it's against him, Oh, he did not like that one bit, and off he went. We had an absolutely, totally rushed segment where FTR and Tully, I think FTR turned babyface and fired Tully, is totally out of the blue, rushed, they cut away, and the announcers were flabbergasted. So presumably we'll have some follow-up. Well, but. And, and what's shocking there is Tully, the whole thing with kicking Ole out of the horseman, was talking about the snot-nosed kid, and you don't have time for your family. I'm your family. We're here to win titles. That's what the horsemen are about. I mean, that was dead set for that. Maybe they'll still do it, but it, it didn't seem like it. It seemed like that was the chance. Then we had, uh, it was almost exactly as I figured they would do it, but it was a little different. And they did it on this show. They had the... Uh, Andrade Hardy family office board meeting. And they announced that there would be a board meeting. I'm like, the board meeting stops and Matt Hardy's already talking about how Andrade wants him fired. So I felt like I was missing a giant part of the story. So they have this uh, deal and, you know, the storyline was that Matt and private party had voting uh, majority. But uh, long story short, private party ended up voting for Matt being fired. They attack him. They beat him up. Darby and Sting run out. They get beaten up. And then Jeff Hardy's public domain music hits. That sports center was on. And he rushes down to the ring. And this the 3,000 fans there. This is why I argue it shouldn't be here. 3,000 fans went nuts. It was great pop. But, um, you know, I argued yesterday, don't do this tonight. Do it like next week. Get a, get a bigger crowd. And when I, when I look at the show and all... All of the stuff that they did on this show. They didn't need this one on this show. They could have very easily done it next week. But they did it here, and, I mean, it worked. But I feel like it would have worked better elsewhere and on a less busy show. We had uh, Swerve and Tony Nese setting up a match for Rampage on Friday. No spoilers, but... No spoilers on who's going to win Swerve versus Tony Nese, everybody. <laughs> or whether it was good or not. Really? Wardlow did an interview. It's a great interview. The gist of it is that he's still under contract to MJF, but he's not going to work for him anymore, and he's going to go win the TNT title. So that match is next week. And, uh, you know, every I always talk about things, and then, you know, you hear some... It's usually the same guy, by the way. He just is an inability to listen or think, or both, which is double whammy. So somebody come up with the idea, they go, I got an idea. Wardlow comes out next week, and, uh, you know, he's going to have the TNT title match. Somebody emailed me this. This is one of my idea, but I thought it was clever. And uh, he comes out, and then before the match, MJF goes, you know what? 
Wardlow? You don't want to work for me? I've seen the air of my ways. You deserve to go out on your own. I'm releasing you from your contract. With a 90-day no-compete clause. <laughs> so then Wardlow can't have his championship match. And so I come with I, I mentioned this idea, and then this idiot goes, Oh, what a great idea, taking Wardlow off TV for 90... Bro, hello? Where did I say you're taking him off TV for 90 days? I said he couldn't compete. He can be uh, on every single solitary show powerbombing people after death if you yeah. want, but he can't wrestle. Say he why do I have to explain town? this to people? Good God almighty, and you ask why I yell so much. Mm-mm-mm. We had Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus versus the Acclaimed. So I had no idea there was a world title match because I wasn't on social media like two hours before the show. Was this announced at all on social media? Or did they just oh. announce in the middle of the show that there was a tag team championship match? <laughs> Can someone help me? So anyway, they had a tag team up. championship match that caught me completely off guard. <laughs> Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy versus the Acclaimed. And uh, it was a good match. And uh, they won with the double springboard Doomsday Device uh, to retain the tag team titles. Thunder again, Rosa. Why do, why do you need well, hold to Hold on, have let me get that. through this quick. Oh, Thunder sorry. Rosa, Layla Hirsch, we only got a minute. Thunder Rosa, Layla Hirsch, exactly, exactly as I uh, laid it out yesterday. Thunder Rosa wins, match in her hometown next week, in a cage, on her birthday. So it's likely going to be the big championship title change that we've talked about, likely coming. Probably coming next week. And finally, Scorpio Sky and Sammy Guevara. Uh, we can talk details later, but uh, Scorpio Sky beat him after interference from uh, the whole crew, including Paige Van Zandt, who ended up beating up Ty Conti, the girlfriend of Sammy Guevara. And then Paige signed her contract on Ty's ass. So they will be feuding Ty Conti taking over the role of Brandy Rose. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Totally need to go back and read the <laughs> Twitch transcripts. It would be your friend. You know what I do is I got a, I got a, I got a little man who uh, he's got a typewriter and he sits there and he just types out everything that goes up on Twitch and he's oh, yeah he, yeah he gives me the you, the papers later in the day. You and let I him sit out there and he starts smacking him. around. Uh, starts pounding. The Tim keys. B. Rock said, "LOL." Hmm, what did this guy say? That's how I spend my afternoons. <laughs> reading the Twitch transcripts. Yeah, he's a little man. He's got a little suit. He's got a brother in a little boat, you know. Oh, boy. You know what I really do in the afternoons is cameos, everybody. Oh, man, do I have fun. F4W online. You know, you could pay me to, re- you know, you could pay me $35 for a cameo to read the Twitch transcripts. I could do that for a little while. If I could find them. Maybe I'll even do a cameo with that little man someday. You can all meet. Sure, maybe you should my move buddy. to Dolly fans. Yeah, he's my uh, little buddy. His name is uh, Fauntleroy. I named him. Yeah. But you didn't Fauntleroy. know that, did you? Yeah, fa- little Fauntleroy. <laughs> He's a guy that sits there and, and types on my transcripts. <laughs> oh, it's something else, let me tell you. Man, what do we got tonight? Vinny and I reviewing AEW and NXT on the Brian and Vinny Show. Of course, you can hear it at WrestlingObserver.com and also video.f4wonline.com, live at 9 Pacific, midnight Eastern. That's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, tomorrow on the show, yes, Dave Meltzer is going to join us. We'll talk what's uh, what's in the newest issue of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Unless it's about promoting matches in advance, then we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> Got it? A lot of great stuff coming up. I want to thank my good old Twitch homies, top-tier YouTube subscribers. We appreciate y'all. Mike, as always, callers, listeners over the studio. Dom. Huh? Who's got a better shirt? Come on. Went to office Max today. Some guy said I had a great shirt. I was like, damn right I do. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.